Sergeant Reginald B. Holmes was a supply sergeant at a lot of different stations and forts. He went all the way to Kentucky and ended in Georgia. It takes a lot of courage and strength to get to where he is now. He was born May 7, 1956. Mr. Holmes was born in Coatesville, Pennsylvania. His father was an owner-operator of tractor trailering. His mother worked at the VA hospital since he was born, which was specifically Pepperidge Farm. He has six siblings, four brothers, and two sisters. He was the only one that served in the military. Uh, no, I was the only one that served in the military. His family was very happy with this decision, though it was sad to see him go. Uh, until I came back, so of course they were they were glad. They were they were glad because my dad was in the military, and I, I apologize for that. He was in the military. He served in the Korean War, so it was sort of almost a military family from him to myself, but uh, it was sad that, that I left, but when I came back, it was joy. <laughs> Mr. Holmes graduated from high school in 1975. He went to the military right from high school. He only attended military schools. After he graduated, he went to work at the VA Medical Hospital. He started there at 14 and he worked there until he was 17. In the 70s, he had a delayed entry program, which means that he was a senior in high school and he signed up in February of 1975. His delayed entry program started when he graduated. When he first left for the military, he was very homesick. The adjustment was very hard for him. It was his first time really leaving home and it was for a long time and you got on your plane and you went right to post. So it was, it was sad. I was homesick for a long time. He gained an interest in the military because of his dad and uncles. His father used to talk about the military and taught Mr. Holmes a lot of things about it. They also used to take his un uncles to their post. So he got to see what they were like and the sort of things they did there. His father was a big reason why he joined the military and the army specifically. His initial point of entry was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 600 Arch Street. The minute he entered the building, he knew there was really no turning back. Once he got his hair cut, his clothes fitted, etc., he was in. He soon entered basic training. Basic training was not just for a specific job. It was for overall strength, and a lot of it came from previous PE classes in school. So basic training was just basic training. It didn't revolve around your job aspect. It was just getting you in shape for upcoming years if you would stay. He had to do certain exercises that he didn't have to do in gym class, and he had to be really in shape for it. There were things like doing the monkey bars or crab walking. There was also a lot of running. Mr. Holmes stated that the best part of basic training was meeting a lot of new people. He had never left Coastville before. He went to basic training. So it was a cool and nice experience for him to get this meet um, different people from different places and hear about their experiences. The worst part was the sergeant entering his barrack and hitting on a pan to wake everyone up. They had to wake up at 4 or 4.30. Nobody could talk back, they just had to get ready. AIT training soon began. This was not physical training, but books and tests. This is when he got into supply. You would continue with throughout your military career. So mine was supply. So I passed the test where I, I made enough grade to, to, to make a supply person. We aren't sure the number of tests, but there was a 300 page manual. You started at page one and read all the way through to page 300. Then you would be ready to take your test. After all his training, Mr. Holmes went to his first assignment, which was Fort Lewis, Washington. This was after the Vietnam War, so what he did was got supplies sent back from the war and decide whether it was salvageable or not. Most of the time, they were not. This was a difficult first task because it felt really personal. The difficult thing about it was just to receive it. all the, 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 the equipment that was damaged from uh, bullets or, 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 or uh, bombs that tore them up, but they all had to come back. Even if they had four wheels or even they were flattened, we, we still had to receive them. So that was, that was kind of difficult. After Fort Lewis, Washington, he went to Fort Knox, Kentucky. He was a supply sergeant there. He helped many trainees and made sure they had all their gear together. One thing he remembers there was his trainees got in formation and played a part in the movie Stripes. It was very well remembered that it cost $5 to participate and was also taxed $5. After Fort Knox, he went to Germany, Fried Friedberg, Germany. He was stationed at the same place as Elvis. Mr. Holmes was there in the 70s and Elvis was there in the 60s, but it was still a very popular spot. 
He was in an infantry unit. And so the first unit I was in was the field artillery unit. So field artillery, we had uh, Persian missiles. Persian missiles was part of, of, of the next war. If it was to be a war, we would use our Persian missiles. Uh, it was just a big old rocket. It just erected. It was just a big rocket. He spent nine years in Germany. There was a lot of memorable moments, but the most fun he had was on the Autobahn. He visited a number of places. The Rhine River and traveling the Rhine River. The Rhine Mine River, but it's the Rhine and then a mine, and then when they meet up, there was a Rhine Mine River. So that was that was an interesting thing in Germany. And uh, uh, yeah, but driving and touring the cities. Now, Germany has villages. So, so Germany and German, their farms, they they had different villages. So we. One thing about Germany is that it doesn't have cities. It was full of villages. One thing the men of his unit had to do was drive in their villages. Some of his most memorable times were driving on the autobahn and going to Munich. When he was done with his nine years in Germany, he was sent to Fort Ord in California. At this location, they had military intelligence people. He was with kids that knew all these languages that they could listen and translate them to English. In this unit, we had uh, military intelligence people. I was supply sergeant of a military intelligence folks. And what their main job was speaking the enemy's language. So... When I got there, they were speaking Korean language. Of course, we didn't have a Korean War. So now they had to immediately switch up and go Spanish. And this is how smart these kids were. So prior to shipping these guys out and ladies out, they had to learn the Spanish language. While he was there, he also dealt with a big earthquake. He had his mom calling him, wondering if they were going in the water. He was in his office when it occurred. One good thing about his unit in California was that every American soldier came back. The war wasn't a long one, but a better one for them. Monmouth, New Jersey was next. One of his tasks was to ship radar equipment around the United States. It was a big, de bigger deal to get to go to this unit because not many got to go. He had to make sure all the equipment was on the plane and properly secure. One thing he was responsible for was inventory and the equipment. After his time in New Jersey, he went to Korea. Korea was a hard time for him because his dad passed away when he was there. He kept in touch with his dad throughout his entire military career, so this was a struggle. Another memorable thing was that the Olympics was being held there. In Korea, when they had the, and I think, I, I can't remember what year, I was in 81, but they had the Olympics in Korea. So if I got to Yongsung early, I would park the vehicle around the stadium. So they, they, they let you tour the Olympic Stadium, and the Olympic Stadium was in Yongsung. So I would park the vehicle Young son, and just go sit in the bleachers and just imagine being in the Olympics in Korea. He had to wake up at 4 a.m. for his post, so that is what he did on the way. The roads there were really narrow and busy in Korea, and the taxi drivers were the ones with the most experience driving. Also with driving, he had to drive up Alligator Mountain, which was a really steep mountain. His last time in the military was at Fort Benning, Georgia. He retired in 1995. Mr. Holmes earned a lot of rewards and medals. Some rewards he got was 50 and his his 50 and 100 mile run club. He almost would have gotten the Purple Heart, which is where the president actually awards it to you. But the only reason he didn't was because he was he had he didn't actually fight in a war. Sergeant Reggie Holmes was a, had a hard time adjusting back to home life. It was a hard adjustment, but it was good. He spent 20 years of his life in the military, so he had to get a professional advice. It was worth it, though. He went for multiple reasons and shared a lot of great experiences. Thank you so much for your service.